Go ahead, put it on real tight. I hope you brought your best tonight. They say they got the fireworks, yeah, they say they got the show. Here around the shoots, you're the best, so let's go. This is Texas Toast. I'm your host, Miss Helen. Kick back and enjoy as we toast the best from Texas. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Texas Toast Podcast. Of course, I'm your host, Miss Helen. And if you tune into the podcast a lot, you hear me talk about Kyle Park. And uh, I am so happy to introduce to the podcast here at the Texas Toast, Mr. Kyle Park. Hello, Kyle. How are you? I'm doing so great. Thanks for having me. I know you're doing great. You look great as always. And um, I think I'm going to start off with some of the current stuff and then we'll take a trip down memory lane. But uh, currently you have a beautiful baby girl. I do. It's uh, it's such a blessing. It's, you know, before having the baby, it's like everyone said, that's going to change your life. It's going to change your life. And I kept thinking, well, hold on, let it let it change my life. Don't tell me it's going to change my life. Let it actually change my life. And it really, really, really does. It's just immediately, uh, it's just life changing. And I, the, the responsibility, the pride, I mean, the littlest things like right now, she's just learning to pull herself up and stand and little things like that. Oh, just, you just say, Oh, my heart just, anyway, it's, I never, I didn't see it coming. I promise. But I, now here I am and it's the, it's the greatest blessing ever. Well, congratulations. She's absolutely beautiful. I follow you on social media and see some of the pictures and she is just got the most gorgeous eyes and her little face. She's so cute. Oh, she does. I know she's going to be a heartbreaker one of these days. It's awesome. She's just beautiful. So out of all of your music and all the number ones you have, well, here we come with Rewind and you have another one. And of course, I want to talk about that for a few minutes because that one, when I first heard it, when it hit the charts, we previewed it here on Texas, on well, Texas on Tap, another segment that we have. But man, that one pulled at my heartstrings, especially the part about the grandpa. And you know, it's like that whole hit pause and, and instead of play. So let's talk about the background of rewind. Well, for sure, it's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to pull at the heartstrings. That's what country music's supposed to do. It's what it's always done for me. And uh, I. I'm just so proud of not only this song, but also radio stations for playing it and listeners for in, for admitting that they like it. Because this is, again, what country music is supposed to be about, uh, ballads and the stories and the way it, it touches you and the way it reaches you. And uh, not that I don't like other styles of country music, but it's to me, it, it's hard to get this kind of song on the radio these days. And uh, again, I'm just proud. To, I thought it was just too good of a song lyrically to just put on the album and let it slide by. And I just wanted to let the, you know, the, give the radio a chance to listen to it and play it. And again, uh, number one for us on radio in Texas. I don't know if that'd be number one for us across the nation because I just of the style of the song being so country. But again, that's why Texas is so great. That's why Texas country music is so great and uh, the fans we have. And uh, again, thank you to the radio and the fans for making it number one because it's it's supposed to that kind of song is supposed to be number one by god it's that's the the, the message it has that's i wish every song of mine had a message like that yeah and it moved up fast i was following it you know speaking of your music i i just i mean it's like a trip down memory lane for me in so many ways not just from you know your your first release in 2005 with big time and caught my ears and then somebody's trying to steal my heart here we go and it's like and then you just kept putting out more and more music and then anywhere in texas and then here comes make or break me with leaving stevenville and fit for a king you know which i mean i kind of think leaving stevenville is like your signature song i don't know it probably is it probably is it's the song i think number one on spotify or it's been one of the top songs forever and uh one of the songs i get requested for the most Right. And then um, turn that crown upside down. Do you know how much fun I had playing that on the radio? <laughs> <laughs> I had as much fun as I had playing it live, I'm sure. It's, it's a fun song to play live. And speaking of your live shows, I've seen you so many times. And, uh, but I have, to t- I have to share a story with you about my son. Of course, he's grown now. He has two beautiful kids, wonderful wife. But you were playing at El Mate National Hall. He was probably a freshman in high school and he had been working at the Western's wear store in downtown. And he, you know, instead of saving his money, he was buying wallets and buying belts and buying hats. 
mom, can I please go see Kyle Park? You know, I love, because he heard you on the radio. He started following your music. You signed every single thing he took to you. <laughs> you signed the wallet. You signed the belt. You signed the hat. I think oh, you signed God. his shirt and he kept it for like ever. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. And so then moving on with the more history of your music, the one I did get to visit with you on was when you released the Blue Roof Sessions. Um, of course, the, I love the story behind that. Let's talk about that in case people maybe aren't familiar with how that all came about. I don't think most people are, honestly. I, I even put out this, like, uh, I don't know, uh, documentary thing on YouTube about how it went down, and it, it didn't have that many views, unfortunately. But, yeah, the idea was, like, old school rock and roll. We, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm the biggest country music fan you can think of, but at the same time, it was my fifth record. I wanted to do something different and fun and artistic. And I, uh, I knew someone who had a really big mansion that was at their second home on, a, on Lake Travis in Austin, Texas. And uh, they let me lease the house for a month. So I just paid, you know, just the utilities bills, basically. And me and my drummer and uh, slash engineer and the uh, other engineer of the record, we lived in the house for the month and we recorded three or four days a week. So we would, you know, record uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I'd hit the road Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you know, for my own gigs. I'd come to the house on Sunday and we'd write some songs and we'd just you know, recoup. And then again, Monday, start recording, did that for the month. Uh, it was just, it was just like kids having fun, really. I mean, it was, uh, I mean, we, we made, I think we recorded like 20 something songs and we kept, you know, the, my favorite 12 or 13 or whatever it was. And the, some songs were just like demos for future records and some songs were just for fun and, uh, yeah, to be able to, and one of the guys that was in the uh, house with me was uh, Ray Benson's son, Sam Seifert. He was the engineer on the record. And so he was able to kind of, you know, we were uh, able to use that equipment from Ray's studio in that house. So we had free reign to the equipment just 24 seven. And I mean, it was a fun musical experience. I mean, I don't know if I'll do that again, but it sure was fun. And I, it's still one of my favorite records. It, it is one of my favorite ones too. And I just, I just love the whole story and how the concept and, and the logistics of how you did it. And of course the house had a blue roof, thus the blue roof yep. sessions. And it's and, the uh, only house in the whole subdivision that has a blue roof. They, <laughs> you can't have a blue roof in the subdivision anymore because of that house. And uh, plus if you buy the CD, uh, the liner notes inside the album is a blueprint of the house that the homeowner it gave is. me. I remember yeah. that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we use that as a, like the, a blueprint of the of the record. And then like we added the, uh, anyway, it's just some fun stuff. Yeah, a couple Ooh. of good singles off there. Come on and what goes around comes around. And I also like that, the driving song that was on there. Yeah, called Drive You. Drive, yeah, yeah. Drive You. That was it, yes. Yeah, wrote that with uh, Drew Womack, uh, you know, great writer yeah. and great singer. And then up next, talk about... Uh, don't forget where you come from. That was a great single. And I remember you um, went to your show at Concrete Street. And I think, I think actually that had, that song had, was still kind of new and fresh. And man, that's another one. Let's talk about the background on that one. Man, it's, uh, I mean, one of my favorite songs for sure. It reminds me of my dad a lot. I didn't write it about my dad literally, but it, when, when I was writing it, you know, he came into play a lot as I was writing this song about a character in the oil field business, but uh, it was about a, a friend of ours in West Texas. I mean, the, the idea was that uh, when he left home, uh, his parents just said, you know, here's, here's a pair of clothes and a hundred bucks and, and make us proud kind of thing. And that, I, that just hit that. Oh man, what a great idea. And what else could we say? What, what, what else would your parents tell you before you left for the oil field business? And uh, we just came up with that, you know, bumper sticker idea of, you know, don't forget where you come from and uh, pray out loud. And uh, man, the song took, it took a while to write. We ended up coming together a couple of times and uh, writing on different days because I knew that it was just such a great song. And we're not in a hurry to finish it. Let's just really focus on making this song a really good song. And uh, gosh, I, I, again, I can't think of many more songs that have a better story than that, that I've written. Sorry. I mean, it's like, it's a, it's so hard to write songs that come full circle like that. And uh, I mean, I, I'm just, again, blessed to have that song and lucky to have that song. I don't, I don't even know how it happened. Just lucky. It was, it's amazing. And I just remember that night when you sang it, because it was the first time I'd seen you sing it live. And I just remember standing there in awe, listening to it, but your shows are so good. You have so much energy. You just, you just come out and, and always do good. And then Rednecks with Paychecks. I want to talk about the video on that. I love that video when it came out. <laughs> yeah. That had to be a hoot. 
that was pretty fun, uh, no doubt. And, you know, most of the footage that you see from that, like, two thirds of it, uh, that is from the festival called Rednecks with Paychecks in St. Joe, Texas. And funny story, by the way, we did not know that that place existed before we wrote the song. Me and Trent Woman were writing that song and halfway through, or I don't even know, we just said, hey, let's Google the song and see if this even exists. And, uh, you know, like, this, like another song like this exists. And sure enough, no song existed, but a venue existed. And so we reached out to those guys and they actually gave us a bunch of their footage that they've had over the years. So we borrowed a lot of that, you know, footage from them mudding and the, the monster trucks and that stuff. And then the rest of the footage, when you see me, that's like in South Texas on someone's ranch, just going out there and, you know, just messing around, uh, you know, filming a video. But the rest, yeah, the crazy stuff, that's all, uh, that's all real stuff from the actual event called Renex with Paychecks. Yeah, well, that was fun. That's that's, that's one, of, one of my favorites. So looking at coming up in the future, I you have a project called the Texas Trio Project. I was so excited to find this. Um, it's yourself, yes. uh, Jason Roberts, and then, of course, your business manager and um, keyboard player for Ace and the Whole Band, John Michael Whitby. Jason's, of course, is with Asleep at the Will, Little Western Swing. I even I even previewed the little polka song on there because I'm a polka girl. I grew up in Sealy. Yes. I'm, I'm, yeah. So... Yeah. Yeah, I'm so excited. Tell well, us about is, that. And this is something we don't advertise per se. We, we do, but we're not out looking for gigs. We're not, you know, right. touring. We're, we're just playing uh, certain festivals. For example, we are playing Steamboat Music Fest in 2022. We played in 2020 and hopefully we'll go on moving forward. But we do little festivals, things like that. Big festivals, I should say. But we are, yeah, we're just like a... Western swing, you know, we love Western swing, love old school country. And that's what we do. We play Bob Wills, Merle Haggard, some old George Strait. And then as not to mention, we have a record coming out in 2022 and some original stuff, plus some old cover songs. And uh, we even do uh, Jesse Polka. Speaking of Polka songs, that's one of that the That was songs. it. And my daddy's recorded. name was Jesse. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I love the Jesse Polka. It's, it's a fun, it's, it is, it's a passion project turned, what if we did this for real and give ourselves a name? Because it ended up being, you know, at first it was like a, uh, when someone would call and want a cover band from me, wanted me to do covers, I'd say, well, my band doesn't do that, but maybe if you want to hire me and uh, my two friends, we can do something different. And we did that enough times where, again, it worked out, put a band together, and now we're the Texas Trio. It was so Dot funny. Com. Because when I was researching that, I, I got a little bit on the notes and I was like, does this have to do with fishing? Because I live on the coast and I saltwater fish and, and that's our Texas trio. And we have a Texas trio classic uh, fishing tournament, yeah, that's right, big, yeah. big tournament that raises money for cancer. But that's our trout flounder in red. But then, <laughs> so, you know, I always try to go everything, everything with everything with me goes to fishing. But I just think that is the coolest thing ever. So That's going fun. back, going back to the start, you starting in music, you were a, a young one, you were 14, your first song got played on radio at 17. And I know you just practiced and practiced and practiced your guitar. And I see all your guitars back there. Yep, I've acquired a couple of them. And yeah, it's just uh, c compared to some of my friends, I got a late start. I mean, my, you know, fiddle player, my band got playing, he was four years old, and my guitar player, and he was like five or six. And but in the sense of uh, knowing what I wanted to do in an early age, yeah, I mean, at 15 years old, I was in high school getting, you know, my song first played on the on my hometown radio in, in Austin. And, uh, yeah, I mean, What's, I – go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to ask you what song that was. Uh, it's a song that's not on any album. It was called Ask Old Hank that I wrote when I was 15 years old, and it was, uh, it was on a demo that I put out when I was a kid, like for my high school auditorium show you know and that's that was the first one and uh that's yeah, not even around anymore on on that demo the only songs that made it was uh a song called yours and mine that i still play a lot it was the first love song i ever wrote and a song called holding on to nothing and those were both on the big time record uh, but the other couple songs i don't play them anymore and they're, they're not around and I, I hardly remember them but that was yeah that was a couple of days ago i mean it's pretty cool to think about how i've been you know performing and playing you know, and on the radio for over half of my life i'm 36 now so uh yeah i got i got started pretty early in that sense that i knew what i wanted to do even going to school in san marcus uh applying to southwest texas and now texas state university like i chose that school because it was in the middle of where i wanted to perform like it was close to austin and college station in san antonio and mm -hmm. you know if i don't went to you know 
somewhere, like, well, most of my high school friends went to uh, Texas Tech and I thought about going there, but I thought about, well, as a musician, I'm stuck in love. Like I don't know what to do. So uh, uh, anyway, so I stayed down South and uh, made my music career as a- uh, Yeah, and that's such a music kid. music hub right there. And when you were at Texas State, you played a lot with some of the Ace and the Whole band members. I did, yes. Uh, such a cool, um, I used to call it Honky Tonk 101 because that's what it was for me. Like at uh, this place around the square in San Marcos, it was called Nephews. They had Tuesday nights, uh, Ace and the Whole band, you know, jam nights. and. Uh, they had been doing it for years before me and uh, their front man, uh, a couple of, was, they'd rotate, you know, Benny MacArthur and then usually it was Hayden Viterra or, or someone else. And uh, at one time, they, all those other front men were off doing their own gigs and they asked me to, you know, step in and, or sit in and play. And I would sing, you know, 10, 12 songs a night with those guys. And I was like 20 years old, I think. Wow. And yeah, I mean, I, I learned, you know, a whole lot about, what not to do for sure <laughs> and then quickly just, uh, <laughs> little things you know but yeah memories I'll never forget so as you were growing up and then you realized you had this gift of music and it started pulling at your heartstrings and kind of your calling in life who were some of your musical influences uh I mean always for sure George Strait I think it's kind of obvious if you uh if you watch my shows or hear my hear my songs but when I was a kid I mean I, I was the biggest Clint Black fan ever that was that was my guy like number one was Clint Black and uh, I was also a huge Chris Ledoux fan. I'm the very first song I ever played on guitar was a Chris Ledoux song called 17, the very first one I ever played. And then, uh, I mean, and at first when I started playing guitar, I thought you had to, you know, pick. And I was like listening to like songs like, you know, Tears in Heaven and Led, Led Zeppelin and Sweet Home Alabama and all these guitar songs. And then I got back to my roots and started, you know, playing like learning chords and learning songs. And then I quickly learned a bunch of songs, you know, as fast as I could. But you know, the songs that I learned first were, yeah, George Strait, Mark Chestnut, Clint Black. Oh, yes, uh, yes. You know, some Earl Haggard songs. Uh, I mean, I, I loved Chris Knight's first record when it first, I was learning guitar right when that first record came out that had It Ain't Easy Being Me and Framed and all the, I mean, that whole record, I learned the whole dang thing when it came out. And uh, what was it around like 2001, two, something like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you have a lot of shows throughout the year and you travel a lot. What's some of the different things that you do when you're on the road? Well, although I'm the only guy that plays golf on the bus nowadays, I love <laughs> golf. playing golf. Yes. Yeah, I love, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm surprised you can't see golf clubs in the background too somewhere. But, I know you're but, a big uh, golfer. <laughs> yeah, I love playing golf, but right now uh, I'm the only guy that plays golf on the road. So it's, it's either like me go play by myself or, you know, or, or make new friends, which I'm, I'm doing lately. So I just, I just dropped off of the golf course and make new friends and go out and play uh, or that. But, you know, uh, I guess I like, I like competitions and games and things. So we'll play dominoes on the bus. You know, I mean, a couple of guys, uh, we, uh, there's other game we play called Beersby, right? It's like Frisbee beer. You, you put a beer bottle on top of a, a PVC pipe and you throw a Frisbee at the beer bottle and you have to try to knock the beer bottle off. And all the while you're playing it's two on two. And then all the while you have to hold a beer in your hand and you have to catch the frisbee with one hand and not anyways. It's I pretty, love it. That sounds yeah. like mm, I'm gonna have fun. to I'm gonna go back and let's re-listen to this and make notes. I think me and my people need to be playing that game. That'd be a good a good game at the beach for us. <laughs> you can buy it on like at Walmart, but or you can also make your own. But it's it's called Frizz Beer or Beersby, one or the other, you know. I love it. I yeah. love it. So this too, um, we do have a lot of young musicians that listen to this podcast up and coming. And so I just kind of want to pick your brain on, on the music side. What was the best advice that you were ever given when you oh, were first starting out? Yeah, I mean, I probably, yeah, when I was first starting out, uh, 100%, it was, uh, I met Johnny Lee when I was like 16 years old. And he asked if I wrote my own songs. I wanted to sing with him on stage and he, he let me sing on stage. It was one of the coolest things when I was a kid. I, my heart was pounding, right? And then after the show, uh, he asked, wrote my own songs. I said, no, sir, I've tried writing my own songs. It's too hard. I, I'm not any good. I, I can't do it. And he said, son, writing songs is like working out. The more you do it, the stronger you'll get. And so I took the advice to heart. And I went home and wrote a song like every day. And they were really bad. They're really bad. And they got a little bit better, a little bit better. And uh, until they got good enough where it's like yeah, I could play that again and play that in front of somebody and 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 I mean that was I, I still think it's like you never forget what you've learned writing songs but you do have to flex the muscle to to be really prolific and and to get it going like right now I haven't been writing as much 
in these past few months because of the baby and I'm back to work, you know, a, a lot busier, but even d- during COVID when I was home, I was writing a lot more and it just felt like uh, the ideas came faster. You just, you're kind of walking around during the day and, and songs like hit you versus when you're not thinking that way, when you're not flexing the muscle, it just doesn't happen. So again, I think it's, I mean, writing songs is like working out. The more you do it, the stronger you'll get. I love it. Do you have a certain, I mean, like, what is your creative process when you're writing songs? Oh, I don't know. I don't have one. I mean, uh, uh, for example, I mean, I, I'm asked a lot, like, is it, do you write the music first or the words first? It's like, yeah, or no. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Sometimes it's, sometimes I, I it's like a one liner, you know, someone says something, they go, Ooh, that'd be a good song title. Or it's like something I hear on, on TV or it's just, uh, you know, or I hear a song and I think, wow, that's one part in the song that I think could be an entire different song. Maybe I, maybe I take that idea or sometimes it's a, it's a, a note or, you know, a lick I hear in a song they go, ah, that, I, I I can hear that, but a little bit differently, and put that with this, and you know, it's, I don't know. It's like it's like putting together puzzles sometimes. And uh, I mean, I've I've written poems and put music to them later. I've taken poems and put music to them, so it doesn't really matter. I mean, I remember in high school, I wrote songs during class, like without my guitar, just sitting there, like writing out what I thought a song could be. So. Oh wow, yeah. that's awesome. I've also I've recorded songs without lyrics before. You know, just I I I kind of had an idea where it, where it needed to go, and I. I love the melody of what I was humming, but the words that were coming out weren't right. It's like, no, it's okay. I'll just record this and I'll, I'll figure out the words later, but this song feels so good. And uh, anyway, just, so there's, again, there's a hundred ways to do it. Well, you have gifted us with so many songs. I mean, like how many songs have you written? Uh, that I've recorded like probably 70 or so, but that I've, that I've written that I haven't recorded I, hundreds of that. I, I mean, know. Not thou- I mean, I know friends of mine have written thousands of songs, but I've, I've been for sure I've finished and written, I don't know, four or 500 songs, maybe more. So if you if you didn't, well, obviously, this is kind of a dumb question, but then it kind of goes to another side. But like, let's say, for instance, you weren't a musician or maybe you get out of the music business one day. What 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 would have been your second career choice? I, I don't have one. I mean, I, I proudly don't have one. I've, I've struggled with that question before. I think it'd be like, country music historian or I mean radio DJ or producer I'd love to be a producer now uh I I I produced my last couple of records I produced uh, a song for Kim Dunn a couple of years ago and uh uh, Brett Hendricks EP a while back uh Leroy Gibbons song and and hopefully more in the future but that's that only becomes available because I've been a musician for the past 15 years like I wouldn't I don't know how I'd be a producer without the previous history right if it was just uh, if I didn't have uh, the band and and, and what, I, what I was doing, uh, I really have no idea what I would do. I'd, and I think that's, again, I said proudly because I, I think that's how you become successful in the music business. You don't have a, a, a second, you know, a plan B. Like, you, can, you don't, you just, I'm a lifer. Uh, you know, you dive head first. And I, again, like, I don't, uh, a buddy of mine's like what you know one time we're laughing it's like if somebody was complaining about something else it's like what are you complaining about you're in this for life anyway it's like you know where are you going it's like it's, it's true yes yes and like you the mob <laughs> you, you gotta kill to get out you gotta be killed to get out of it so, yeah. well and you've just brought so much joy to so many people with your music and especially with your live shows and your charisma and your spirit when you're on stage it's just it's it's just a kind of one of those things where at least every, if I couldn't every three months, every six months, you know, you're in need of a Kyle Park show <laughs> always. So Very I good. appreciate you joining us. And so do you, will you have a follow-up out soon for Rewind or? Yeah, uh, it's out right now. It just came out last Monday. And it's called What's Your Drinking Song. Oh. Uh, I wrote this with Ben McPeak as well. I wrote uh, Rewind with Ben McPeak and Bernie Nelson. Uh, during COVID. And I wrote this song as well with uh, Ben McPeak and uh, Michael Farron from Nashville over a Zoom right, just like we're doing right now. And mm-hmm. uh, it's, uh, I mean, the, 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 the groove and the vibe and, the, and the, the, the feeling of this song is one of my favorites. I can't, I'll play this song live forever. I just, I love the way it feels. Well, looking forward to that. I'm sure it'll zoom up the charts and I'll be adding it to zoom my up, stuff. Zoom up the charts. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's that's right. 
<laughs> okay, well, gosh, it's been great visiting with you and just happy to see your face and so happy for all the stuff going on. Congratulations on the new baby. And uh, one last question before I let you go, if you were a cocktail, what would you be? <laughs> if I was a cocktail, what would I be? Oh my gosh. Uh, I don't know. Whiskey water, boring, but healthy. Is that right? Okay. <laughs> that, that sounds good. I like that. Well, I'm not healthy at all. So that's just what I like to drink. I think it's whiskey water. So yeah. <laughs> whiskey water. Well, you look healthy and happy. You're just glowing. You look great. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> Thank you so perfect. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, Kyle. Thank you. Helen, appreciate it. And with a heavy tongue, she knew where I was from As she left, I dared to say Well, you can go to hell And hell, I'll go to Texas I've had my fill of every place but home